Hi everyone, this is Dive Into Book Design and I'm Jules and I'm here to show you some quick tips about using InDesign to format your books for print for self-publishing and creating EPUBs from an InDesign file. And you can use these techniques with, at least the print techniques, with other software systems like uh, Scribus, Affinity Publisher, and Word. So it's not just for InDesign, but that's our my main focus. When it comes to EPUBs, I don't believe Scribus can export an EPUB yet, and I'm fairly certain Affinity Publisher can't export an EPUB yet. But I've heard that they're, they've been in the works for a while. Now, I'm not sure if these same techniques can be used just uh, as software apps like Vellum or Atticus. But you can at least take the knowledge that you've learned from these videos and hopefully apply it in whatever way to make your book look more similar to a traditionally published print book. Anyway, so let's get back into what this video is about. It is a really quick video on how to create an image that goes across two pages. And when you're talking about print on demand, you have two things you need to consider. One, you're going to be using a glue binding and it is not a science. So they can't give you an exact number at best. It's well, no, it's not even an estimate. It's a guesstimate. So you need to make certain allowances. Ingram Sparks says that if you have an image that goes across two pages, you need to keep a few things in mind. One is that the glue does not adhere to ink very well. It's not an issue for an image like this, which has less ink and more paper, but if you have an image that is darker and solid, you're going to want to uh, take that into consideration. I'll give you a quick tip on how to adjust for that as well. The thing you need to remember is that, like I said, the binding is glued and at best it's a guesstimate about how tight it will be. So you need to worry, is the glue going to stick? And you can look at your image and I'm going to say, because I have approximately maybe 10% ink where the glue would be. Um, not even. It's it's probably closer to 5%. I'm going to be okay. The other thing I need to take into consideration is, do I have any details that if they are lost, will screw up the image? So you don't want to have faces or anything important right in the scene. And in this case, I'm going to admit this is complex, it's lines, so it's, it's not gonna always be perfect, but hopefully if I do it well enough, it won't be that big of a problem. The other thing you need to consider is how many pages are in your book and where this image is. So if it's in the middle of the book, you have to realize that that glue seam is gonna be even tighter than at the front or the end of the book. In this case, this is the full title page, so it's right at the beginning. I have a lot of leeway. I have a lot of uh, freedom to err, so to say. The What I'm going to do first is I'm going to, I have my image that I'm using, and this image is going across two pages, and I'm going to decide how, how far across I want this image to go. And uh, I don't, I'm going to put it all the way to the bleed, but um, oh, no, I don't want to lose his nose. 
All right. So let's let's bring them in a little bit. Uh, well, that didn't. There we go. Um, no, I'm I'm still gonna, and I'm eyeballing this. So this is not an exact. For me, this is not exact. I'm just trying to come up with how far out I want the image to go. That's pretty good. And then, you know what? Let's bring it up a little bit. Perfect. So this is the image that I'm starting with. And I'm gonna to go to my layers and you see I have a left and a right side. So this is my left side. I am going to make sure that that whole box, the image box is selected. I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna put it, let's just paste it in place. Uh. And we're going to move it up so it has a red. And now I'm going to hide it. And then I'm going to make sure I'm holding on to the blue side. So I'm not going to change the shape of the image that's inside. So I'm holding on to the frame and I'm just going to drag it in to the seam. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So left, right, verso, recto. So once I have both of those shown, I see that image. But remember I said we had that glue strip we had to worry about. Now Ingram says to use an interior bleed. Um, what would be the bleed, the typical bleed measurement. And the bleed measurement is, and I know it, but uh, I always, always screw it up. So I'm gonna double check 0.125. I always wanna put a zero in that, in front of that bleed. Um, and just so you guys know, I, Regardless if I have an image that goes to the edge of the page or not or outside the margin, I always include an interior bleed because that takes two things into consideration. It helps with the trimmer and not smearing ink. And in some cases, and we shouldn't be doing this, but if you have your margin set to the minimum margin requirement, some italics will fall outside that minimum margin that you've set up and the automated system will kick the PDF back. If you have an interior bleed, it shouldn't. It might if you're talking about the inside margin. I'm not 100% certain, but uh, in this case, I have uh, set up this book that I'm working on right now with uh, the drop cap, the first page says uh, drop cap design, that is an image that falls right up to that minimum margin requirement. And I've added the interior bleed and I've had no problem with it. So just saying, it's for your, it's just a best practice. So always include, even if you don't have anything that goes to the edge of a page, even if it's not an image book, even if it's not a color book, add an interior bleed. It just makes for best practices. All right, so back to this video. How are we gonna do this? So our, like I said, our bleed is 0.125 inches. So uh -huh. we need, to create what is essentially, uh, and I'm just gonna do this with a, with a quick 
text box. And <laughs> point one two five nine. Uh, and this. is the area that is considered the glue area. So I need to the image is going to um, need to adjust to one another to line up. And there is going, it's not, like I said, it's a best a guesstimate. So you're going to want to have an overlap. What you mean by an overlap? I'm going to show you. So if, let's go back to layers. Let's only work on our right side. I'm going to move that over so I don't have to see it. And now we're back here. So this is what's supposed to be my glue strip where I'm not supposed to have any ink. So what I could do is just slide this over, right? And do the same thing on this side. And you think, well, that works great, right? Except we've lost part of the image. So what we need to do is we need to actually slide the image over by 1.25. Nah, ha ha. There are probably, uh, so, this is, you can do it via um, the X and the Y. I do it by eyesight and my arrow key. So I'm gonna go, I see where my little center bar is. I'm going to slide this over to where it lines up on my glue strip. And now I'm going to do the same thing on the left side. Gonna see that little box, move it over, line it up. I'm gonna put them both on and you can see now where there's a duplicate, right? But this is the magic. If I were to take this, and let's fill it with paper and take this and give it a fill with paper. You'd see that the image lines up. Perfect, easy peasy. Now, if you, like I said, if you have a lot of ink here, you're gonna wanna keep these strips in just as uh, a glue strip. In my case, I'm not that worried about it. So I can get rid of them or I can keep them, but that's how you essentially create an image across two pages and not worry about losing any of the image to the glue seam. All right, if you've enjoyed this video, click like, go ahead and subscribe and you'll get notified of any new videos that I upload, and I'll be uploading a few. 
And if you have any questions or you have something that you want me to answer, go ahead and drop them in the comments and I'll get to it in another video maybe, or I can answer it in the comments section. Also, I'm doing a uh, Kickstarter for this book, the Omnibus, Omnibus Collector's Edition. And I've done a lot of really cool layout tricks. So if you want to go and check that out, you can check out that link that's in the description below. And not saying you need to back me or anything, but to get an idea of what you can do with some fancy layout and uh, how you can make your book look that much more like a traditional published book. Great. All right, like I said, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click the like button and be sure to subscribe so you get notified with um, any videos in the future. Thanks.